this week's episode of Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. Stacey Kennedy. Mm -hmm. This week's program is on the theme of art and the autistic community. It's going to look a little different than usual because we're actually filming it at two different times. But to begin with, we'd like to uh, introduce our frequent guest, Camilla Bixler, who will be telling us a little bit about Creativity Explored. Creativity Explored is a San Francisco-based nonprofit that's a visual art center where artists with autism and other developmental disabilities create, exhibit, and sell their art. Creativity Explored has two locations. One of uh, their primary location, gallery location, is at uh, 3245 16th Street. And Creativity Explored was founded uh, 33 years ago to help um, artists with autism and developmental disabilities um, have a way to um, create art and to earn um, income from the sale of their artwork. In fact, 50% of the um, art sale goes to the artist. Um, a key focus of Creativity Explored has been to um, help artists develop their own sole proprietorship businesses. Um, and really begin to earn livings as visual artists. Um, some of the artists um, working at Creativity Explored not only exhibit in San Francisco, but they exhibit nationally and internationally. And some of them, some of the artists have uh, collectors around the world who um, have been uh, collecting um, their art. And also, Creativity Explored licenses art um, images for products like home decor or stationery and even, um, even chocolate. Mm -hmm. So currently they have an exhibit, Andrew Lee, My Life Here and There, which continues through February 24th. And um, we would love our listeners or our viewers to stop by and um, check out the exhibit. Excellent. And uh, mentioning uh, licensed exhibition work, I understand that our first guest, Andrew Bixler, has his art uh, license to a particular company. And I think Stacy will be talking with him shortly and discussing that as well. Yes. So Andrew, uh, tell me. Tell me how you started your artwork. <coughs> well, I've started doing work my whole life, all, you know, all the time. Even in high school, I got blue ribbons for yeah, large paper mache figures. Mm -hmm. And even up to now, I've been doing a for doing all sorts of art at Creativity Explored. And you can even check out my own website business called andrewbixlerart.com. Nice, very nice. So, do you do this full-time or part-time? It's 3 days, it's 3 days a week at the center and mm -hmm. And then at, and then I can e and I even work at home some. I see. That's good. So, um, tell us more about the nature of your artwork and what you try to express. Well, one thing I, sp one thing I specialize in is animals, and whether it's ceramics, digital images, or wood cutouts. Mm -hmm. And also, I had tilapia, which some, yeah, you know, on which got chose for on a pillow by Crate and Barrel too. Mm -hmm. Some of it's known nationwide now. Why do you enjoy creating works of art? Well, CE is known to be perfect over the years because of the gallery to sell and the instructors and uh and it brings joy to both for me to to make and sell the work great so um one more question what are you hoping to do in the future in terms of your art well all to make is to make more digital images and wooden animals mm -hmm. and uh even and even broaden even broaden my skill with business. Great. 
Andrew, besides the Creativity Explored website, could you tell our viewers uh, where they can see your art and your website? AndrewBixlerArt.com. <laughs> Okay, um, Abe Tabus is an example of one of our Ascend members who's quite an accomplished artist. He's an autistic artist who communicates his view of the world through really bold graphic images. If you go to his website, you'll see that he has these images and greeting cards for sale. Abe is a San Francisco-based artist who enjoys um, biking, bowling, and music, as well as his art. Very good. Look forward to seeing his work too. And now we're going to uh, see some more of the artists from Creativity Explored. Our first artist that we're going to be talking at this point is Brian Hayes. Tell us about how you started your artwork. I began doing art when I was a little boy and I shown interest in creating uh, characters from cartoons and TV shows, comic books, movies, and uh, superheroes. But to make them in my own creative style, my own creative way. So it's been more like a hobby. Tell, do you do this full time or part time? Where do you create your artwork? At Creativity Explorer? I work part time from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and all my artwork is done at Creativity, but if it's like a sort of separate project, I might do it at home on my own time. So, but most of all of it's at Creativity. Tell us more about the nature of your artwork and what you try to express. My artwork is an extension of me and um, my inner me and how I view the world in a different light. And I think that I would like to be able to share that concept with everyone else uh, so they can see it as well, not just me. I want to share it with everyone. Why do you enjoy creating works of art? Because without the value of expression, art cannot be seen as the beauty of representation of life itself. So it's a, a wonderful thing to have that in life, art. What are you hoping to do in the future in terms of your art? To branch out more with what I've done in art and to also try some new things, new techniques, uh, the amazing world of art, uh, like clay, animation, which I'm currently doing a little, and uh, calligraphy. So I have a few in mind that I would like to try out with the potential that I have. And now uh, we'll be speaking with uh, Kevin Roach. Tell us about how you started your artwork. Uh, I started my work uh, since, I very, since I was a little boy, uh, uh, since I was eight or nine years old uh, at home, and then uh, I, I started to learn more work uh, at the Tibia Explorer. My artwork, is, it blossomed there. Do you do this full-time or part-time? Where do you create your artwork? At Creativity Explorer? Four days a week, and I, I do all my work uh, at the Tibia Explorer. Tell us about, about, the, about, the, about the nature of your artwork and what you try to express. Um, lots of uh, detail of uh, beautiful uh, homes, uh, uh, landmarks in the city, beautiful landmarks in Golden Gate Park, uh, uh, ethnic uh, metal work that are uh, uh, beautiful uh, uh, women and uh, ethnic women that are African and uh, Brazilian and uh, beaded and just all uh, very, uh, lots of detail to it. Why do you enjoy creating works of art? I learned a lot from my teachers. They're already artists. Uh, of themselves, and they put a lot of uh, uh, care and help us learn a lot of our artwork. What are you hoping to do in the future in terms of your art? Um, more, more beautiful uh, things of San Francisco and uh, of, of the neighborhood, probably, of the Mission District. Excellent. Mm -hmm. 
Kevin, I just learned a little while ago that some of your art has been featured on uh, edible items. Can you tell us about that? Yes, it's at the f uh, a Ferry Building, and it's at the chocolate, uh, f f uh, uh, like they sell chocolate there, and it's uh, Victorian houses, and uh, it's really, they're very nice. How did you get involved with that, or how did you um, uh, learn that this was something that you could do? My, my art teacher uh, mentioned it to me and, and so thought it would be a very good idea to do that, and it's, uh, it's been really nice. Well, excellent. So what does that involve from, from your perspective? Do you take one of your uh, existing pictures and they transfer it, or do you come up with a new design for them? Or Tell us a little uh, about that. What, uh, we showed them uh, the, three, the four houses, uh, Victorian houses in the West Edition, and they decided which ones they wanted. They were very colorful, uh, and they, you know, picked out the ones they liked. Painted ladies on chocolate, really nice. Yeah. So, Brian, I understand that you're also involved in animation. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I do the animation work over at Creativity Explore 2, and for right now, the animation is the second part. The first part is where I write down the storyboard and do illustration artwork on the for, for the animation that I will do. And once the storyboard is done, um, it will be done on the computer and then we'll process it out into an animation format. Uh, but for right now, I'm still working on it and maybe by the end of the summer or somewhere towards the end of this year I might be done with it so really good if it doesn't have too many spoilers can you tell us what the project is about or what the storyboards leading to the storyboard is based upon one of my artworks that I did at Creative Explore 1 before I got into the animation that's over at CE2 and um, it's based upon this comic book character that I'm writing a script but also a comic for that I hope to be able to have published and maybe sold at Creativity. It's called The Hood. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want to be able to learn more about that, I guess you could be able to look it up on my Facebook or something like that. So <laughs> I have the pictures on there. So, yeah. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Brian, and thank you, Kevin, too. Um, this has been a fascinating segment. Uh, we've seen uh, about the link between the autistic and the artistic communities, and we know we're going to be seeing a lot more of the work uh, that all our artists have uh, been providing. So thank you very much again. Thank you. You're welcome. And for our next segment, we'll be speaking with our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy.
And now for our cultural reporter, Stacy Kennedy. Thank you, Will. Hello, Keith. So what I'd like to bring up is uh, Thursday, um, February 11th, uh, is a lecture that Matthew McIntyre and I are going to be uh, talking at, and the theme is called Hearing Our Voices, and Karen Kaplan is the director, and pretty much questions are going to be asked of us of our, you know, like background of being on the spectrum and our schooling and what we wish we could have, you know, what could have been more accommodating and what are, what are our plans like in the future, um, with, uh, with, with what we do and being on the spectrum and so February 11th, it's taking place in San Rafael at 111 Las Galinas Avenue. <laughs> so, uh, and that's from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Another lecture is going to happen in Redwood City, Wednesday, February 24th. It's going to be the same thing as February 11th, same questions. Uh, Matthew and I, the same people. And that will take place in Redwood City at 1201 Main Street at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you're interested, go to those lectures and you will see Matthew and I speak. February 12th is a Friends Like Me fundraiser and dinner and entertainment happening at the Ark of San Francisco, 1500 Howard Street. The um, cross street is 11th Street. And um, there will be a fabulous band, and there should be a silent auction, too. So if you're interested, come and join the dinner. It should start around 5 p.m. February 12th, Friends Like Me fundraiser. February 13th is Fan Fest, KNBR, 680 a.m., the Giants Celebration, beginning at 10 a.m. at the AT&T Park. All gates will be open, especially the one near Willie Mays, the gate, Third and King Street. Um, it'll present our live stream. Uh, people can join conversations too, and those who can't go um, can watch it on sfgiants.com, beginning at 10 a.m. Same timing, and uh, and also uh, another reason to bring up Fan Fest. You know, I'm also myself a Giants fan, but they also will be celebrating Autism Awareness Day, April second. So that will be very great. And February 13th, the same day, will be the Job Club at the Arc of San Francisco at, starting at 10 a.m. There will be a panel discussion of um, successful adults on the spectrum who have succeeded in their jobs, employment. They'll be discussing that. Saturday, February 20th, at the same place, Arc will be a autism and creative economy discussion. And um, Donald Cohan, the executive producer of In the Public Interest, will be leading an exploration of how autistic adults and their talents can open paths to employment and help them integrate into the working world. So that is February 20th, Saturday, February 20th, Autism and the Creative Economy starting at 10 a.m. at the Arc of San Francisco. And to top it up, uh, happy early Valentine's Day, which will be happy, happening February 14th, so spread the love. Thank you. Once again, this has been a fascinating uh, session we've had uh, discussing uh, art and the autistic community. I know it's a topic that we will be visiting again before too long since it is so vibrant and dynamic. So this is uh, Keith Halperin. And Will Burnick. Stacey Kennedy. Brian Hayes. Camilla Bixler. Wishing you a great week for Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Take care. And happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>